Wow, this is such a difficult road here. Wow, I've never seen anything like this in my life. This is crazy. Good morning world, welcome back to the channel. It's day number 378 on our circumnavigation around the globe by motorcycle. And this morning we have really nice tortillas for breakfast. So we had really some difficulties to find actually vegetarian tortillas here that we decided we buy a kilo <laughs> and make our own tortillas. And now we have tortillas pretty much for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Have a look here. We have some avocado, some refried black beans, some cheese. I have some mayonnaise on my one. And Oli, of course, Marmite. <laughs> yes. So it's a pretty, pretty nice breakfast. We are here in Mexico City, staying in this love hotel, mostly because it's the cheapest room in town, but it's got like hearts on the wall here. It's got hearts on the bathroom door. It's got hearts on the shower. And we have a bit of a view out the window of the streets of Mexico City. It's a beautiful morning, the sun hasn't really risen above the buildings yet but after a few days of rest we are ready to hit the road again so let me show you guys where we're heading today so we are here and today we're going to be heading northwest out of the city joining up with the 15d highway coming off here to finish the day near Uruapan. yes it's time to make our way further into mexico and we found an absolutely awesome place to finish the day. It's actually one of the world's youngest volcanoes and it's called Paracutin. It's about 270 miles away and Google estimate it will take us six hours. So we will have breakfast now and then we have to pick up everything. So better hit the road, let's go. There's Deutschland, a sticker. No way, but that car is not a German car, is it? It is a VW actually. It is a VW. Yes, that's great. All right, are you ready to hit the road? on day 378 yes all right let's do it still ready we totally forgot to give our helmets a clean <laughs> yeah i could have done with maybe a bit of a visor wipe yes uh-oh got uh -oh. a bit of a guard dog situation here <laughs> hello oh <laughs> hello oh i know oh jesus The last thing I want to do is run over a dog in the morning. A cute little dog. But that dog ran up to us earlier on when we were packing up the bike and he sort of ran over to us like all big and mighty. And then I was like, hello. And then he was just like ran off. Yeah. He didn't like it. In the city. City of Mexico City. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, I'm still a little bit sick. And Ollie got a little bit sick as well. Got a bit of the sniffles, yeah. Yeah, so that's not too cool, but we try to get better yeah that's all right you can just take a nap eh <laughs> i wish i wish some people can sleep on bikes i don't know how but i've seen pictures of passengers sleeping on bikes so maybe you can give it a go today uh, i don't think so no 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 it sounds terrifying being asleep on the back of a motorbike <laughs> <laughs> oh my god can you imagine on the back of your motorbike <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably just because it's on the back of mine, eh? <laughs> well, the first thing we've got to do is get some fuel because I'm literally blinking on empty. <laughs> Opa. Hola, buenas. Hola. Gasolina regular. Lleno, gracias. Did you hear my R rolling? Yeah, how do you say bon appetit? Um, bon provecho. Bon provecho. <laughs> <laughs> price per litre is 23 Mexican pesos which is about one pound or just over a pound isn't it just over a pound I yeah. think it's 22 wow. to the pound isn't it yes but this time we are grabbing the 87 <laughs> octane instead of the 91 just to save that little bit extra money yeah but to be honest I've not noticed in terms of the range of the bike or the no. performance I haven't noticed any difference between like lower octane fuel and higher octane fuel since we started sometimes we've chucked in 95 sometimes we chucked in 87 nice per oh, perfect okay perfecto. gracias bye bye mexico city it was nice i got sick but it was nice <laughs>
So we've seen that there's loads and loads of strawberry sellers on the side of the road. So I think this is an amazing opportunity to pick up some strawberries. Whoa, look at these little baskets. Wow. <laughs> Quanto costa? 220. Like six pounds. Six pounds. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, I don't know where to put it though. Wow, look at that. That's amazing. That's brilliant. Muchas gracias. <laughs> Muchas gracias. Mm. Are they tasty? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Amazing. I don't know if you guys can see, but they've got like these white tents around, and I think that's where they're growing the strawberries. Do you think we went overboard? <laughs> yes, yeah. but I love strawberries, so uh, we will have definitely enough strawberries for the next like three days. I think so. I think so too. It's going to be a strawberry bonanza. The question is, my love, where do we put it? Got payage number, I think, six of the day already coming up. I really didn't expect that. But yeah, we have literally like every half an hour, every hour, there's a payage. Some of them are really cheap. You know 25 pesos about one pound or maybe two pounds but this one is very expensive this one is 91 which is about four pounds they do add up yeah we're yeah. probably up to probably 10 or 15 pounds already today yeah the road is not very good it's very bumpy and because of our suspension issue we are really bumping around the whole time yeah Hola. Yeah. gracias we've got oil leaking out of our rear shock which basically the oil is there to sort of dampen the bounciness of the suspension coil at the back the more oil that's leaking out of that bit in the middle <coughs> basically the bouncier bumblebee is so it's getting worse and uh, yeah when we're going about 60 65 and we're going over some bumps we're really bouncing yeah sometimes even the tire is hitting the back of the bike so we have to be very conscious and very um careful about that yeah because we don't really want to stop uh here in mexico to get this shock uh, rebuilt we've planned to do that in san diego when we reach the us fingers crossed it's gonna be okay until then it's a bit bouncy but it's manageable that's the point it's yeah manageable. yeah and we are not going too fast and too crazy and if the road is quite good we don't have too much of an issue but this is as well a reason that we actually take the toll roads just to try to keep bumblebee safe until san diego <laughs> yeah well, we've definitely got to do a few bits and bobs on bumblebee when we get there yeah for sure crazy i think they just started a fire over there it's really smoggy yeah the countryside around here looks super super dry and i don't know if this is like a controlled fire ahead or like a wildfire but it's pretty close to the road hey yeah hmm. oh yeah it's right here hey look at that wow yeah that doesn't look like a man-made fire oh, like no. for any purpose wow crazy Here we are at the best restaurant in town, Lavi's Mexican Kitchen. <laughs> Look at that. So what have we got here for lunch? Some really, really tasty vegetarian tortillas. I put some mayonnaise, some black beans, avocado. We have some onion and pepper and some cheese. Like, hello? <laughs> Everything you need. Everything you need in a taco. The taco of dreams. 
So we're on break number two of the day. We've got about an hour and three quarters to go. It has been a long ride and it's starting to get pretty hot, but it's only half past one, so we're doing pretty good. And some nice fresh strawberries for dessert. <laughs> we have a lot of strawberries. So we're determined to keep this wonderful little basket that the strawberries came in. So we've turned it into a spice basket and we're, we're going to try and put that inside the duffel bag. Kind of works, hey? Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of waste of space, but the basket is so cute. Look at that. Handmade, a eh? free basket with your strawberries. We just wanted to take a minute to tell you guys about our amazing sponsor, On Vacation Doctor, and their super handy app for people traveling the world like us. The On Vacation Doctor app connects you with top English speaking doctors in any country in the entire world. Just put in your location and this app will provide you with the name, the location and the phone number of the nearest English speaking doctor to you. It also provides local ambulance, fire and police numbers as well as the local embassy address and phone number. But the awesome thing about this app is that it's absolutely free to use for the first six months and then only four nights for the next six months. So super helpful and super affordable. Show your support for our very first sponsor by downloading the app for free today by clicking the link in the description below. Stay healthy, travel safe, and now back to the video. <laughs> Get off the road. <laughs> Don't want a car smashing into that, hey? Getting closer now and we've finally come off of the big highways and coming onto a little bit of a smaller road. After five hours yeah. or six hours. We've got about 10 miles to go and it looks like quite a nice road to finish the day. So we've reached the town of Angahuan and uh, we're heading up to the tourist information center but this looks... Oh, yeah that's closed, hey? I'm not sure. Oh, it is closed. Yeah, okay. Not sure what this noise is all about. Ready? Three, two, one, go! Okay, okay. Yeah, we've got to figure out another way. So we're currently trying to navigate through all the back streets of Anguhuan, trying to bypass that closed road. Santa. Oh wow, cool. That's nice. It is actually really nice here. It seems like there's a bit of an event going on, a festival type thing. Yeah. <laughs> there's a horse behind us. There's a horse behind us? Oh yeah. So this guy, he was just chasing us because he wanted to ask us to, uh, we want to have a ride. Because to get to this volcano, there's a big off-road section where I don't think that we can go there with Bumblebee, especially in this condition at the moment with the suspension. So we will have to see how, uh, how can we make it. <laughs> but he's yeah. asking as well. It's okay. Gracias. Gracias. <laughs> so actually at the moment we are just having like people with horses like following us asking yeah. us if we want to ride <laughs> yeah i mean there's only so far we can really go i think before it's going to become too bad for us to ride oh yeah it's Let's true see. i mean at the moment we got still another mile to go to reach the Angahuan visitor center yeah and that is also where we're going to be trying to camp tonight because apparently you can also camp there i think it's like 10 pounds for both of us yeah so we'll go to the visitor center we'll see how bad the road is to continue towards the volcano and uh, we'll kind of decide what to do when we get there yeah exactly wow this is such a difficult road here can't believe it wow yeah, yeah it is a bit uh, a bit mental are we going down here oh no hold on a minute 
uh, Centro Turistico de Angohan. Oh yeah, it's this one, no? Yeah, but my thing says we got to go down here, but this yeah. is absolutely wrong. <laughs> my one says as we're going down here. Oh, no, we've gone past now. Yes. Yeah, this road is incredibly difficult to maneuver on. Yeah. I'm going to have to go real slow here. Really slow, really slow. Look, there are cabanas. And then here is perhaps a nice uh, lookout. Let's start with that, shall we? Let's start with that. And let's <laughs> just arrive first, because that was really stressful. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. I can see the volcano from here. Oh, wow. We are here. We managed to arrive here. There we go. <laughs> wow. Cool. The baby volcano. There it is. Over there in the distance, Volcano Paracutin. Epic view. Epic view. Yeah. So what do you know about this volcano then? I might need the help of my phone for that one. Five minutes later. So this volcano, Paracutin, is known as one of the world's youngest volcanoes. Literally, in 1942, this was just fields. There was nothing here. It didn't even exist. And then in 1943, lava started erupting from the ground. And it must have been a pretty intense week because by the end of the first week, Residents said that that volcano was already 100 to 150 meters high. Intense. Intense, hey? Over the next nine years, this volcano basically erupted constantly. And by 1952, it was 424 meters high. And it basically destroyed an area of 233 square kilometers. Two towns in the surrounding area were evacuated. This is where it gets absolutely amazing because one of these villages, San Juan Parigotiro, which was evacuated, which was over there, there was a church in this village. And over the nine years of eruptions, despite being surrounded completely by lava, this church actually withstood everything and is still standing today, literally half buried in molten lava. The church. Ah, it's right there. cool. How is the road? Is difficult or the road is okay? Do you think it's okay well, with the motorbike? Mm, no, it's really hard. It's hard you know, yeah, yeah, it's, it's better uh, it's walking or. How far is it to walk? Uh, walking is like uh, 25 minutes. 35? Yeah. Is it okay to fly the drone here? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah? you, you, you can fly. Right there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. yeah, maybe we should walk to there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, you guys walk or horse, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, you live here? Yeah, in the town. Amazing, what a nice place to live. Oh, yes, yeah, it's really beautiful. Right here. beautiful. You guys like shower later? Maybe uh, tomorrow <laughs> afternoon or? Maybe. Oh, yesterday is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Bubble Bee. I am really glad that we didn't try coming down here with Bumblebee because we were like thinking about it. We were like, oh, maybe we should give it a go. People said it's possible. Look at this. Look at this sand. Sand or steps? Make your choice. <laughs> Seriously. There's absolutely zero chance that we could have made it down here with Bumblebee. I think we made the right decision to go on the old socks and sandals. <laughs> I tell you, after riding all day on this like highway with all these trucks, it just feels so nice to be just like walking through a beautiful forest with no traffic. It's really, really nice around here. You can hear the birds singing along. It's very beautiful. Yeah. Very peaceful. I think we're gonna have a really nice night here. You never know because somewhere there's a light, somewhere there's a speaker. <laughs> a party comes along. Yes! It is Saturday so yes. really fingers crossed that this campsite doesn't become like some party camp tonight.
Wow, look at this in front. So this is basically the extent of where the lava from Paracutin volcanic eruption got to. So if you look behind me, it's just forest, no sign of any recent eruptions, and then a wall of lava. Look at that. Wow, so we are in the lava field now. We've got solidified lava on one side of the path and on the other. Wow, I didn't expect that today. <laughs> <laughs> it's a magical landscape. And you can see as well that cactuses are growing in between. The cactuses have colonized. Okay, so that's basically the end of the path. And now they've carved this little way through the lava field to go and see this church, which is just up ahead. Wow, I've never seen anything like this in my life. This is crazy. That's so impressive. How this church is still standing, surrounded by this lava field. <gasps> and this was like molten rock going on around this church for like eight, nine years. Yeah. And it withstood it, it's still there. That's magical. <laughs> Have a look at this. So I'm standing what would have been inside the church and amazingly the altar of the church is still intact. This is one of the reasons other than the fact that the church is even here at all that this place is a kind of like a holy site. People come here on pilgrimages to see this place because it's said that place was protected. It's not hard to believe because when you see all the lava around this place it does make you think how the place survived. Guys this place is crazy. I mean literally thousands of degrees lava here. Church here. It's pretty crazy to imagine that these walls are still standing. Molten lava, church that survived. Wow, what a spectacular visit. Incredible. Yeah, but as you can see behind us, that sun is coming down pretty fast. So it's time for us to head back to Bumblebee and get our camp set up. We made it! Happy and alive! Whee! Yeah, we got our tent set up. We got Bumblebee racked up. Yes. And look at where we are in this forest. What an incredible spot. And we will just head over there to check out the sunset. Yeah, we are very, very close. Oh my god, it looks beautiful. Come. Yeah, sunset. It's really red. It's like a red bowl. I've also got our dinner bag because we're going to eat dinner over here whilst appreciating this vista. That's the spot right here. Oh. It's like a really, really, really red sun. Yeah, it looks like the Mars. It's <laughs> crazy. And of course, we've got Volcano Paracutin just over here as well. What a magical place. 
so we will just prepare our dinner now, our tacos. <laughs> it's literally the same thing we had for breakfast and the same thing we had for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give us a thumbs up. <laughs> Subscribe to the channel. Share the video with your friends and family. Comment below. And if you really, really, really like our videos, you can join us on Patreon. The link is in the description below. We will see you next time. So we just got back to the tent and the security guard just came and told us that basically everyone from the festival which is going on just over there in the town is coming here after in yeah. like one hour yeah they say 150 people all the cabanas will be full all the cabins all people camping <laughs> apparently it's gonna basically be the whole festival is moving here yeah. I can't believe it because we said just before we were like every time we camp there's a party going on next to us and then we thought we hit the jackpot tonight we were like beautiful quiet forest you know out of the town no one else here it looked so promising and now it's going to be absolutely crazy apparently in one hour so we're just going to lie down and enjoy the peace for a, a little bit yes